like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7, an all new channel focusing on the history of Major League Baseball. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. If you've noticed anything about Clemson and their history in bowl games, you'll notice that for the most part, they play in bowl games close to home, and they play in bowl games in the southern part of the United States. It makes sense as to why this is the case, aside from the fact that most of these bowl games take place in the southern U.S. for weather-related reasons. Bowls love inviting teams within close geographic proximity, because it means that more fans will likely show up, since the largest group of fans and alumni are around where the campus is located. Getting 10,000 fans to travel from Clemson to Charlotte or Atlanta to a bowl game is a heck of a lot easier than getting them to do it for a game in Boston or Hawaii or something like that. For the most part, the only exceptions to this rule where they're playing a game not in the Southeast were big bowl games with prestige, like a national championship or the Fiesta Bowl or the Cotton Bowl. Generally speaking, if Clemson's playing a bowl game, it's going to be relatively close to home. However, there is one absolutely bizarre exception to the rule. From 1986 to 2003, every single bowl game that Clemson played, without exception, either took place in Georgia or Florida. That is, every single bowl game except for one, when during the 2001 season, they played in the Humanitarian Bowl, all the way up in Idaho, a solid 2,300 miles away, and a solid three time zones away. Try to drive it, and with no stops and with no traffic, it will take you 33 hours. Try to fly it, and you have to connect somewhere. You're probably connecting in Atlanta, or you're taking a two hour drive to Atlanta just to get to the airport. And it's not like the national championship they had against Alabama during the 2018 season in Santa Clara, California or the other national championship they had against Alabama during the 2015 season in Glendale, Arizona, or the 2016 Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State in the desert. No offense, but it's the freaking Humanitarian Bowl. Which raises the question, how the heck did this come to be? What is the story behind Clemson playing a bowl game all the way up in Idaho? Well, it's the story of an insane fan base, a ton of chaos, and more than anything else, a broken fax machine. Seriously. Because this is a story about how it might just be, considering the circumstances, the craziest bowl invite in the history of Clemson football. Before I talk about the bowl invite itself, we need some context to understand just how good Clemson was, and why they were even getting an invite in the first place. The year is 2001, and Clemson, under the guidance of head coach Tommy Bowden, is looking to build off of its best season in years. In 2000, the Tigers went 9-3, which was their best record since 1993. They made it to the Gator Bowl and finished the season ranked number 16 in the nation, marking their highest finish since they ended the 1990 season with a number 9 ranking following a 10-2 record. Heck, at one point during the season, after starting 8-0, they were the number 5 ranked team in college football, and there was a legitimate chance that if the cards fell in the right place, that they would be competing for a national championship, or at the very least, a spot in a BCS bowl game. Now, did that happen in 2001? Could they repeat that momentum? Not really, as I think most Clemson fans would say that especially after how good the 2000 season was, that 2001 was a bit of a letdown, especially since they were 4-1 at one point, were ranked number 13 in the nation, and started the season off ranked in the preseason bowl. However, that's not to say that Clemson was a bad football team by any means, as they finished the regular season with a 6-5 record, including a ranked win on the road against the number 9 Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And no, this season didn't exactly go to plan. I don't think anyone would argue otherwise. However, that's not to say that there weren't a few bright spots on the team, that helped make them bowl eligible for the third straight year, and for the sixth time in the last seven years. You have a dual threat at quarterback, Woodrow Dantzler, who, when he was on his game and was playing well, was a nightmare for opposing defenses to stop, seeing as he finished the season not just as the fourth most accurate passer in the conference, 
but as the fourth leading rusher, as he ran for over a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns, which was second in the ACC. From a total yards standpoint, and a touchdowns responsible for standpoint, no one in the ACC did better than Dantzler did. Dantzler became the first quarterback in NCAA history during that 2001 season to throw for 2,000 yards and run for 1,000 yards in the same season. There's a reason why he's in the Clemson Hall of Fame, thanks to leaving Clemson at the time as the school leader in passing yards and passing touchdowns. He was incredibly fun to watch. Even if the rest of the team wasn't that great that season, and even if the defense that year wasn't much to write home about, Dantzler alone made this team fun to watch for any college football fan, as his arm and his leg kept Clemson in a ton of games, and kept the national spotlight on them. So you would think that with a winning record in a major conference, and you would think that with the backing of a name like Clemson, which is a pretty big school with a pretty big fan base, that the Tigers would be a lock to go bowling in 2001 right? You would think that this would be smooth sailing all the way. And even though it's not the bowl that Clemson fans maybe envisioned at the start of the season, as maybe they had BCS aspirations after what happened last season, and knowing that this was Dantzler's final year, that they'd be going to a bowl game nonetheless. However, that's where things get a bit dicey. It seemed like Clemson was going to go to the Tangerine Bowl down in Orlando, since the ACC had a spot in that game. Heck, for a while, it seemed as though Clemson was the favorite, especially after a great game to end the season when they destroyed Duke by a final score of 59-31. Dylan Thomas, an executive for the Tangerine Bowl, raved about Clemson and said that they've got the edge as things stand. As Thomas said, We've had great experiences with Clemson. I still have one of those $2 bills the Clemson fans used to bring. I've worked every bowl in Orlando since 1974, and the Clemson visits are the ones that stand out in terms of how great the fans were, how many people showed up, and what kind of game they put on. Even other bowl games were expecting Clemson to get this bid, with Ken Berry, an executive for the Silicon Valley Football Classic, saying that he expected the Tigers to get the Tangerine Bowl bid. However, in a shocking move, when 100 Tangerine Bowl officials voted, in a two-hour-long spirited debate, by a narrow margin, they landed on the 7-4 NC State Wolfpack. Not many people saw this coming. Not even head coach Chuck Amato saw this coming, saying on the shocking news, We were as excited as can be. You think we were going to play in the Rose Bowl for the national championship as excited as they are. I just hope you don't have a recount like you people do down there, referring to the 2000 presidential election. The Silicon Valley Classic out in San Jose had a spot open, but decided to go with Michigan State, saying that Clemson was showing no interest in that bowl. Ken Berry, one of the officials, said on Clemson's lack of interest, I think they would have been shocked at what they would have seen here. Which makes sense, seeing as Clemson thought they were a lock for the Tangerine Bowl, and put all of their eggs in that basket. And now, what seemed like a surefire thing was up in the air. Because now, there was a legitimate chance that the Clemson Tigers would not go bowling. There was just one spot left with no automatic time to decide that Clemson had a shot at getting. And if they didn't get it, then it was over. That was the Humanitarian Bowl up in Boise, Idaho, where whoever got the at-large spot would take on the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, the winner of the WAC. And while there were some schools in the running, including UCLA and Ole Miss, the favorite to get that spot, even though it would have been a rematch of the conference game, was this team right here, the hometown Boise State Broncos. Boise State was a very good football team during the 2001 season, going 8-4 and, and averaging 34.2 points per game, which gave them a top 20 offense in the country, while allowing just 23.3 points per game, which gave them the top defense of any team in the WAC. This was a team that ended the season hot, winning six of their final seven games, including a 35-30 win on the road at number eight ranked Fresno State. So they had that big time win under their belt. And on top of that, at the end of the day, the bowl business is just that, a business. The goal of bowl organizers is to pick teams that will not only draw great TV ratings, 
but will get as many butts in the seats as possible, especially since bulls have to hit minimum attendance quotas in order to stay certified. Put an outside team in there? And how many people are flying up to Boise, Idaho to spend New Year's there in cold weather? Especially if you had higher hopes for how the season was going to go. Put the hometown team there and essentially give them another home game and it's a different story. So far, there had been four installments of the Humanitarian Bowl, and I even did a video on the inaugural one between Cincinnati and Utah State, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Two of these games did not feature Boise State, while two of them did. The average attendance of the two non-Boise versions of this bowl was just 17,978. The average attendance of the two bowls where Boise State played? That was 27,852. A near 10,000 spectator difference, which is a big deal. That's a 55% increase in attendance when Boise State is playing in the Humanitarian Bowl versus when Boise is not playing there. Heck, even today, there have been 27 installments of the Humanitarian Bowl, now known as the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Only twice has the game drawn over 30,000 fans. Both times, you guessed it, Boise State was one of the teams playing. Everything was looking likely for the Broncos to play in this game for the third straight year, with Clemson being left out in the dark. That's when Clemson pulled off the upset of the century, because somehow, they beat out hometown Boise State to play in this game and go bowling. Which raises the question, how the heck did they do that? Well, once Clemson fans realized what was going on with the Tangerine Bowl, and realized that it was a humanitarian bowl or bust, they took matters into their own hands. You're worried about whether or not there's going to be interest in Clemson playing a bowl game up in Idaho? We'll show you interest like you've never seen before. With that, hundreds upon hundreds of requests saying to invite Clemson were sent to the fax machine of the bowl, which people found thanks to various sources. And when I mean hundreds upon hundreds, I'm not over-exaggerating. The demand was so high for Clemson to play in this game, that it caused the fax machine to overheat and shut down. Clemson fans came out in such full force trying to get their school to go bowling that they caused an entire bowl game's operation to shut down because the fax machine couldn't handle it. And when Gary Beck, the executive director for the Humanitarian Bowl, made the announcement official and picked Clemson over Boise State to the shock of a ton of people, as it meant the hometown 8-win team that had a top 10 road win under their belt was not going to be going bowling, the fax machine was the reason why. If it wasn't for the broken fax machine, we might not be talking about this. Beck said, The Clemson fans broke our fax machine. The people back there must be really charged about coming here. To say that the campaign from Clemson fans worked would be putting it lightly. But just like that, the Humanitarian Bowl had Clemson in their game, and all it cost them was a fax machine. And Clemson made this trip worth it, as even though this was somewhat of an underwhelming season, at least they got to end it with a bowl win, as they took on the WAC champions, Louisiana Tech, and won the game 49-24, in a game that wasn't even that close, seeing as Clemson led at 49-10 midway through the fourth quarter, before two garbage time touchdowns made the score somewhat more respectable and quarterback Woodrow Dantzler got to end his incredible career on a high note, throwing for four touchdowns. The win was viewed by 25,364 people in the stadium, so the fax machine thing was not lip service. Clemson fans really made the trip across the country from 2,300 miles out to watch their team play and win their first bowl game since 1993. Just like that, the bowl win drought, where they were 0-5 in their last five bowl games, was over as the 49-point score was the most that Clemson ever scored in a bowl game, not just at the time, but to this day. This game is in the Clemson record books for that reason. And to think that none of it would have happened if it wasn't for a broken fax machine. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes at 9pm Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of the NFL, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 9. 
To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jamalgator7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.